In this section, we're going to look at an ECMAScript 6 feature that makes it even easier to work around the problem the way we were looking at in the last section. So if we need to create a function inline and preserve the value of this, we can take an ECMAScript 6 shortcut. I'm going to create a new function here. I've stubbed out the beginning of it called print later all caps. Print later all caps is going to access a field of contact and convert it to uppercase before printing it. So we'll say set timeout and we'll say console function console.log this dot first name dot to uppercase and we'll wait 1500 milliseconds and the way we described in the last section we know that we can preserve the this value that we need by coming to the end of the function definition and saying well instead of passing the function we've just defined let's invoke bind on it with the current value of this and pass the result of the bind call. So let's go over to Firefox and make sure that works. Print later all caps. And out comes Joe in all caps. So where does the ECMAScript 6 part come in? ECMAScript 6 introduces a new syntax for defining functions, sometimes called arrow functions, that use an equal sign and a greater than sign, sort of arrow shape, to indicate the mapping from the data that goes into a function to its return value. We're not going to concern ourselves with the details of the arrow function syntax for here. What we're going to look at is the feature of the arrow syntax, which automatically performs a dot bind this on any function that you define with the arrow syntax. This feature is sometimes referred to as lexical this, because the this is determined based on the position in the code where the function is defined. So how would that work? Well, with arrow syntax, we can replace a function that takes no parameters with an open and close parens literal, the little arrow symbol with the equal and greater than, and in the case here where we need to actually execute some logic, we can put the, we can put the block of logic directly after the arrow. And in this case, we can remove the dot bind this because the arrow function will dot bind this automatically. So let's take a look and see if this still works in Firefox. And out comes Joe in all caps. So this last version that we've seen will only work in browsers that have the ECMAScript 6 arrow syntax enabled, or if you're working in Node or another JavaScript environment, uh, and you have it set to either enable these Harmony ECMAScript 6 features or if you use a transpiler to change the code from ECMAScript 6 syntax to a lower version of ECMAScript syntax. But this is something that will become increasingly common as people start writing more and more ECMAScript 6 code. Whenever we need to create a function on the fly and we want to retain the value of this, that behavior is actually built in. The last thing we're going to look at, just to round out our discussion of this, is to visit other ways of determining how this can be bound when we run a function. Earlier we looked at a decision tree that showed how the runtime determines what the this binding should be if we don't give it any other instructions. Here we're going to say, if we have a function and we know exactly what we'd like this to be, we can actually tell the runtime to invoke the function with a particular value of this. So let's take a look at how that works. If we return to the problem version that we had early in the demonstration, we had contact.printName working great, but if contact.printName was invoked without a dot, we had a problem. We can see that right here. If I say f equals contact.printName, and then I run f, I've run the same function, exact same function, but without a dot, and that this context is lost. So next we're going to look at how we can run f without a dot and tell it exactly what we'd like this to be. So there are two built-in functions that will do this. We saw how, well, there are three built-in functions that will do this. We saw how bind produces a new function with a particular this value, but it doesn't run the function right away. So dot bind is handy when we need the new function and we want to pass it somewhere. 
But if we want to run the function right now, we can use two old-fashioned functions called call and apply. If I type f.call, I can pass a value for this explicitly, like contact, and we get the behavior we'd like. I can also call f.apply and pass that this context, or contact, and get the behavior I want. The difference between call and apply is how we can use it to pass other parameters that the function might want. But in this case, we're only interested in context. So for the purpose that we're looking at here, call and apply are going to work the same way. So now we've looked at the definition of this, how the browser decides what to bind this to, common problems that come up, workarounds, and the future of solving these problems. Thanks for watching. And if you're excited to keep diving into the details of JavaScript, I'd love to work with you at a new Circle class.